Hey guys, it's me, Jen, and welcome back to my channel. It's been about one month now since Lucas and I have moved to Boston, so I thought that now would be a great time to just sit in front of the camera and share what our first impressions are, as well as share five things that we recommend you check out if you ever visit Boston. So if you don't already know, Lucas and I are completely new to the northeast side of the United States. Please do keep that in mind as I'm sharing these first impressions with you. <laughs> Prior to moving here, I've only ever been to the northeast side of America twice. The first time was a family road trip. We drove from Toronto, Canada and drove all the way down to Washington, DC. And then the second time that I've been to the northeast side prior to moving was a business trip. So I was actually in Boston for a business trip in spring of 2019, but my coworker and I were only able to spend half a day in Boston. So I wouldn't really count that as a full Boston experience. Lucas, on the other hand, has never been to the northeast part of the United States, so this is all completely new to him. On that note, our first month living in Boston was an interesting one, you know, as we started to learn the different new normals, as well as adjust to all the changes. I will admit that the timing of Lucas's military orders somewhat benefited us because we were able to go ahead and drive across the country during the summertime, and then we landed here in Boston at the very beginning of the most beautiful time of year in New England, which is fall. The fall foliage here is incredible, just to say the least. Pictures don't do it justice. There's just something about the trees here in the Northeast that are different than over in the Northwest. I love seeing how all the tree branches really mesh together, creating kind of this dense array of colors is definitely different than what you experience in fall within the Pacific Northwest. For the month of September, the weather has been beautiful. We've been lucky in that regard. We've also noticed that the terrain here in Boston is much flatter compared to the hills of Seattle and so I feel like that because it's so flat it makes the blue skies seem even more grand and noting that they're actually blue. After living in Washington all my life we are very used to overcast skies so I have very much learned that blue skies are to be celebrated. So moving on to our first impressions of housing. The housing and architecture here is vastly different than the Pacific Northwest at least in my opinion. I feel like the Northwest is very modern and contemporary while in Boston there are like trends that houses have here you know almost every house has black shutters on their windows or a lot of the houses have brick incorporated into their style every house kind of has its own charm and character and I personally love that about the New England neighborhoods here of course it's definitely going to depend on what part of Boston that you're in but by now Lucas and I have very much started to fall in love with the New England charm that these homes have kind of adding on to the whole older homes no Boston is known to be very, very historic. I feel like that's an obvious one. Lucas and I have noticed that the houses here are typically built in the early 1900s and even more so in the 1800s. It's just kind of hard for me to wrap my head around that. I feel like growing up, you hear of a house that was built in the 1920s or 1910 in Washington, you think that's like, oh, that's an old house. Well, here, it's very common to find a house that was built in 1870. It's just a concept that I'm still kind of getting used to. Boston is also known for many firsts in America, like the first college in North America, which is Harvard, the first American lighthouse, the first chocolate factory in the United States, the first Dunkin' Donuts, that's an important one, and the first subway, which is still running today, and I believe it's referred to as the T here. I won't go into much more detail about the history of the city because I feel like talking about Boston history is like a whole video in itself, but given that Boston is where the Boston Tea Party occurred and the Boston Massacre, Boston is typically known by many as the birthplace of the American Revolution, so you can only imagine how much history is really here in this city. Before I get into the five things that Lucas and I recommend that you check out if you ever visit Boston, I have two final impressions that I wanted to share with you guys. East Coast drivers! tend to drive much faster than West Coast drivers. Let me know if you agree or disagree. And we also realized that Boston accents are actually much more prominent than we thought that they were gonna be. Like we've heard Boston accents before, but we just thought that they were more exaggerated in media. And I'm sure it still is. I feel like not everyone we talk to has a Boston accent, but we've definitely noticed certain words where Bostonians will like drop their R's as they talk. What's funny is that we are very much the ones who probably have 
distinct accents. Truthfully, Lucas and I probably stick out like sore thumbs over here in the Northeast. Okay, so moving on to the five things that Lucas and I recommend you check out if you ever visit Boston. Do keep in mind that there are a ton of fun things to check out in Boston. There's like endless lists of them. As Lucas and I spend more time living here, our list is just gonna get piled on more and more with fun things to do in Boston, but these are just gonna be based on the things that we experienced during our first month of living here. Kind of like our way of documenting our memories as well, but we also want to share about them because we we thought they were all really fun. Basically decided to spend our first month in Boston kind of doing the touristy adventures if you will so that way we can get like a kickstart or like an intro of experiencing our new city. Did we finish furnishing our apartment? or unpacking during the first month? Absolutely not. We figured that we'd have plenty of time to settle in and unpack all our boxes when the weather gets colder, but for now we decided to seize the warm fall weather and experience Boston in the sunshine while we still can. Suggestion number one is going to be go on an old town trolley city tour. I can already see some of the eyes rolling at this idea, but hear me out. I know city tours can be a very hit or miss, for some people, but Lucas and I really enjoy tours. This one is called the Old Town Trolley City Tour. It can actually be found at other major cities like San Diego or Nashville, Tennessee. Although the non-touristy and more local experiences are much more authentic, usually more fun and less crowded, Lucas and I both agreed that going on this Old Town Trolley City Tour was a great way for us to just kind of learn some fun facts about the area, especially given the fact that we don't know any locals yet. What I really loved about this Trolley City Tour is that it's a hop on hop off style, which I really, really enjoyed because you're able to really customize the experience based on what you want to see and do. I've been on tours before where you're just stuck on the same agenda as everybody else. So what's really cool is that you have complete control over how much time you spend at each stop. You can also plan your route ahead of time. So there are a total of 18 tourist stops. These include Downtown Crossing, which is where the Boston Massacre occurred, there's the North End, that's where Paul Revere's house is located, and there's also like Boston Common, Cambridge, Beacon Hill, and much more. There's tons of different tourist spots. So based on what you want to see and do, you could even start at stop number four and then ride the bus until stop number seven. We adored our tour guide. He went by the name of Batman, so it surprised us because we wanted to just hop on and hop off all day, but we ended up wanting to just ride with him. So during his hour break, instead of jumping onto like the next tour guide you don't have to wait an hour you could easily hop onto the next bus with a different tour guide we decided to just hang out at Quincy Market we got lobster rolls for the very first time we tried their New England chowder and we just kind of sat and walked around and enjoyed our lunch until Batman's tour left about an hour later he was witty and knowledgeable and he just really made the whole experience entirely memorable the second thing that we would recommend you check out when you're visiting Boston is to walk the Freedom Trail if it's a sunny day and you feel like walking you're in luck because Boston is extremely walkable. Hills are very few and far between in Boston, especially compared to Seattle. So if you want to skip the city tour and check out Boston on foot, you can absolutely do that. The starting point of the Freedom Trail is over at the Boston Common. There is a visitor center where you could even pick up a map so you can do the self-guided tour yourself. There's also plenty of maps online that you could look at. I went ahead and purchased a map myself just because I like tangible reading. There are 16 historic sites that you stop at as you walk along the Freedom Trail, including the burial grounds of Samuel Adams, the old corner bookstore, Paul Revere's house, the Bunker Hill Monument. There's all kinds of different stops along the Freedom Trail. Do keep in mind though that, that some of these sites are duplicative of what you'll experience at the Old Town Trolley City Tour, but I personally think it's still a fun experience to be able to walk around the city. There's also plenty of stops in between the formal stops, such as the Samuel Adams Tap Room. That is where Lucas and I I took a break from walking. So yeah, if you just spend a few hours walking along the Freedom Trail, you'll easily see tons of different parts of Boston. If you want to go ahead and take the walking route, feel free to do it. It's very walkable. Just make sure you wear some comfortable shoes. Moving on to suggestion number three, and that is visiting the Quincy Market. This place is quickly becoming a staple and a favorite of ours whenever we go into downtown Boston. The Quincy Market is located right next to Fannel Hall, 
and consists of diverse food vendors from pizza to lobster rolls to smoothie stands to coffee shops and bakeries. There's just so much food to be discovered at Quincy Market. Our fourth suggestion on what to do while you're visiting Boston is to go on a whale watching tour from the Boston Harbor. We highly, highly recommend doing this, especially in September. I know that whales migrate and so there's better times of year than others to like check them out. We lucked out in September of 2020 to see some amazing marine life. Lucas and I are big fanatics of whales and marine life. We've been on dolphin and turtle cruises before in Hawaii. We did a boat excursion in the Philippines. We love being out on the water and being able to see wildlife. With all that to say, we have not been on a formal whale watching tour before so we thought that this would be a fun opportunity to not only check that off our bucket list but also experience the Atlantic Ocean compared to the Pacific. It was about 70 degrees and blue skies so we lucked out on the weather. If you do end up doing the whale watching tour with Boston Harbor Cruises it is very windy during the voyage to the whales. I think it was like a 45 minute boat ride over to where the whales are over to the sanctuary area. Sometimes it could take like 30 minutes to get to the whales. Sometimes it could take more than an hour. It really just depends on where the whales are hanging out that day. Also, if you take this tour, we recommend that you bundle up. Even if it's 70 degrees out and it's sunny, there is that ocean breeze that it has a chill to it, so make sure to layer up. Nevertheless, the voyage was a thousand percent worth it, even if it was windy or chilly or whatever the experience was. It was so worth it. What we personally loved about Boston Harbor Cruises compared to other whale watching tours is that their tours are 100% guaranteed with no expiration date. Whales are wild. They're unpredictable. They do their best to find as many as they can that day, but if you happen to get unlucky and you don't see any whales that day, they will redeem you for a rain check and that could literally be years later. Luckily, we didn't have to redeem our rain check. We were able to successfully find four beautiful humpback whales that hung out nearby our boat and we also got the treat of seeing hundreds of dolphins just hanging out with us. So, so cool. It's an experience that I just really can't describe in words you just have to experience it for yourself hopefully the footage that I'm showing here in this video can give you a little taste of the magic and finally our fifth suggestion on what we think you should do in Boston again based on what we've experienced so far living here is to hang out in Beacon Hill I mentioned Beacon Hill earlier in the video it's one of the stops of the Old Town Trolley City tours but I wanted to emphasize this little area a little bit more as our fifth suggestion the architecture of Beacon Hill is just entirely charming. The brick buildings with the cobblestone roads, it's just truly a sight to see and just cannot be missed if you visit Boston. There's also the very iconic Acorn Street, which is very Instagrammable. And there's tons of people, highly recommend trying to go on a weekday or in the morning. In addition to the very iconic Acorn Street, there are also many local boutiques, cafes, ice cream shops, and antique stores to check out as you peruse down Charles Street and throughout Beacon Hill. And with that said, that's a wrap. Those are our first impressions of our new home, as well as five things that we recommend you check out in Boston based on our experience here for the first month. We are so excited to add on to this list the more we explore and the longer that we live here. We actually have some fall content coming up soon, which I'm really excited about. We went apple picking, and then we also went hiking over in New Hampshire. We also traveled over to Vermont. We are so excited to bring you guys along. It's just our way of documenting our memories, but also kind of inspiring our friends to see what they can do when they come and visit. So yeah, keep an eye out for that fall content coming up soon, but until then, I will talk to you guys soon.